Hello and thank you for being here, Class 1A. And welcome to the subject of My Wife is DMC. I'm your substitute teacher at DMV, and today's lesson will be on Respondo Homebrew. A class where we take pop culture to pen and paper. Today we'll break down the features and abilities based on your classmates' icy hot powers as a sorceress origin. I'll also give a build guide at the end so you can play as Todoroki Shoto at your D&D table. Good question, Miss Asui. Well, he's a super-powered kid with the powers of Iceman and the Human Torch. In spite of his daddy issues, he still ranks among the top superhero high school students with a frigid demeanor and a white-hot sense of justice. All the bombastic walls of ice and football field-sized explosions make for quite the spectacle, and his hot and cold balancing dynamic is a fun challenge to translate into D&D rules. Speaking of rules, here are today's learning objectives. First, translate Shoto's ice and fire abilities into manageable spell mechanics. That includes special moves like his heaven-piercing ice wall or flash fire fist. Second, design the features to be unique enough for the character, but still maintains cohesion with a sorcerer class. There is a third design goal, but I'll get to that in a bit once I showcase the core mechanic of the home. Now, to showcase Shoto's abilities, we'll head to the field to make sure nobody gets hurt. As luck would have it, your fellow classmate Mineta is gracious enough to serve as Shoto's training partner. He was totally willing to do it. What a lovely and wholesome boy. So. Is everyone comfy at the table? Because class is in session. Be sure to let me know you're present by clicking the like button. Todoroki Shoto, you're up! Today's homebrew is the sorceress origin, Thermal Strife. While Shoto limbers up, let's review his first feature, Thermal Defenses. There's a lot of damage going on with the Thermal Strife, so the HP bonus will help with that. The additional proficiency in light armor also alleviates spell packs like mage armor. The next feature and the more exciting one that will help carry the subclass is Thermal Magic. This one grants thematically appropriate cantrips and spells, but more importantly, it lets you change the damage type of any energy-based spell into cold or fire. Shoto, why don't you demonstrate this by casting the Thunder Wave spell on your training partner. Observe how Shoto freezes the area and then quickly melts it to create a sudden air vacuum that blew Mineta away for 16 cold damage rather than thunder. And then there's an extra 4 cold damage from a 1d4 bonus, which I'll explain in a bit. Mineta, are you good? We're just getting started, so get up! The last of the first level features Shoto will be showcasing is Equilibrium. This is the core feature of Thermal Strife, where constantly casting colder fire spells will start building up in beneficial and harmful ways. This is in the form of a new stat called Equilibrium. Its default value is 10, but casting cold spells reduces it by 1 plus the spell's level or increases it by the same amount for fire spells. If we look at Shoto's temperature, you can see that casting that Thunder Wave spell puts his Equilibrium down to 8. Shoto, why don't you cast a cold, scorching ray spell on Mineta this time? All three hit for 13 cold damage and another 2d4 extra cold damage. Shoto's taking it easy on you, Mineta. Observe, however, that as Shoto cast the spell, his equilibrium went down to 5. So where does this extra damage come from? This is where Thermal Empowerment comes in, where your current equilibrium adds bonus dice to your spell's damage. Notice how Shoto's right side is building up a lot of ice. That's because his equilibrium has reached his frigid. Th 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 uh. That's because his equilibrium has reached his frigid threshold of five, and he's beginning to take one d6 cold damage at the start of each of his turns. If you've been paying attention, then you know that Shoto can get out of this frigid threshold by increasing his equilibrium. Shoto, uh, why don't you ignite this random photo book labeled Secret Picks of Class 1A Girls that I found under Mineta's desk. And this is the third learning objective, which is to bake in the mechanics of Shoto's strengths and weaknesses into the features. While it lends to a risk versus reward style of play, it also allows for some unique strategies with spellcasting that matches the tactical mind of Todoroki. Looks like Mineta's decided to make this a little difficult. Shoto, why don't you show your classmates some of your thermal maneuvers? Observe how this 6th level feature lets Shoto do more with less. First off, Shoto is going to cast Ice Knife. 
Mineta had a good attempt, but ultimately gets caught by the ice projectile and the resulting explosion for 13 cold damage, and an additional 6 cold damage from thermal empowerment. Now Shoto will use the thermal maneuver ice skating to glide up to half of his movement speed as a bonus action, avoiding Mineta's attack. Mineta takes a sticky ball and uses it to put out the flames that previously caught on his clothes before throwing it directly at Shoto. Shoto will use another thermal maneuver called Thermal Ward. While it raises AC to only 21, using this Fire Ward will still give him fire resistance. That 10 damage from the flaming sticky ball gets cut down to 5. Once again, Shoto's built up quite a bit of ice on him. There are several ways he can manage that, but for now he'll use his 14th level feature, Flash Fire to cast Fire Shield as a bonus action. Given the rules of spellcasting, let's give Mineta a break this turn and not cast anything just yet. Mineta, however, decides to... flee? Really? Come on, kid, where's your school spirit? Your pride as a 1A student? Your drive to go even further beyond? Shoto, go and show him some plus soldier, will ya? As a bonus action, he'll use two sorcery points using thermal management to put his equilibrium up to 10. Then he'll cast Cone of Cold and use thermal magic to turn that into a fire damage spell. With six additional sorcery points, however, he'll use a bombastic thermal maneuver called Jet Kindling. This thermal maneuver maximizes a number of the spell's damage dice against one target. Roast him! Roast that perv! I want barbecue sticky balls by the time the smoke clears! <clears throat> Excuse me. Anyway, looks like Mineta's finally showing some plus ultra spirit! What's this? Looks like he's piling a bunch of fire resistant balls on himself to serve as a barrier. Excellent! This is a perfect opportunity for Shoto to showcase his last feature, Phosphor. With this 18th level feature, he'll use 7 sorcery points to fully immerse himself in his thermal abilities granting him nearly complete control over his equilibrium. Given Mineta's resistances and potential immunity, it might seem counterproductive for Shoto to go on the offensive. Luckily, Shoto still has something that he can use while in Phosphor mode. See, this last feature adds even more thermal maneuvers in the form of Cold Flame's Pale Blade and the Great Glacial Eager. And I think I know what Shoto's gonna use. This thermal maneuver is great at cancelling out damage resistance and immunities against fire and cold damage, as well as boosting the damage of the Cone of Cold spell to a d10 to really make that spell slot worth it. Well, and that is down. Someone take him to the clinic and let's get back to the classroom to discuss optimization. Real quick, I want to give a shout out to these fine mallards who supported the channel in our Ko-Fi. Thank you so much for all your support. Our content is always free. But if your situation allows you to support us, we would highly appreciate any coffee or purchases in our Ko-Fi page. It helps keep the channel's lights on and fuels my wife's risotto addiction. Anyway, let's get back to the classroom. Mineta will be fine, hopefully. You took it easy on him. Right, Shoto? Anyway, let's optimize a Thermal Strife Sorcerer. Let's start with stats. Charisma is definitely your main stat. This increases your heat and frigid threshold so you can take advantage of the equilibrium bonuses before you take any damage. I would recommend Constitution as your secondary stat. Thermal Strife's core feature has a self-damaging mechanic, so try to get this up to a plus 3 as early as possible and potentially a plus 4 later on. As a tertiary stat, I recommend Dexterity since the subclass grants an armor proficiency and keeps it in line with Shoto's acrobatic skill. Get it up to a plus 2 from character creation if possible, but a plus 1 is better than nothing. Now, intelligence and wisdom are in a bit of a strange place. Shoto himself is pretty smart, probably second only to Yaoi Orozu compared to the rest of class 1. If you have space for it, get a plus 1 or plus 2 to intelligence. Wisdom, however, mm, well, we've seen Shoto lose control a few times, and he's let family issues get in his own way. He's lost competitions and even licensing exams due to his hubris. While it's not recommended to dump Wisdom due to saving throw frequency, I wouldn't call Wisdom Shoto's strongest stat. Skill-wise, take Acrobatics to avoid getting grappled and also so you can look cool while saturating the area in Ice and Fire. An Intelligence skill would also be apt, so History, Nature, or Investigation works. Personally, I'd take Investigation 
since the subclass necessitates a lot of strategizing, and Shoto himself has shown incredible tactical acumen, so might as well embody that in your character sheet. Oddly enough, Shoto hasn't shown any proficiency in charisma skills like persuasion or deception. Certainly not performance. Intimidation works pretty well though. Let's talk feats. There are a number of ways to maximize your features for Thermal Strife. Tough is a good pick, but this feat tends to get better at higher levels, so I'd recommend getting this later rather than sooner. If you're taking this feat, I think it's okay to keep your constitution at a plus two. The absolute priority, I think, is Elemental Adept. The main reason you're taking this is to increase your average damage for your bombastic spells and get around any pesky creatures that have cold or fire resistance at early levels. Remember that most of Thermal Strife's features only work if you cast cold or fire spells. Honorable mention for feats is the Moderately Armored feat. This subclass again grants a light armor proficiency at level 1, so if you take Variant Human, you can pick it up right out the gate to get some above average AC. Well, above average for Sorcerer at least. Just remember to focus on HP buffers due to the heat and frigid threshold damage. So, did we meet today's learning objectives? Be sure to let Eraserhead know in the comments whether I was a good sub or not. Oh, and don't let him know about the Mineta thing. Leave a like on the teacher feedback form and be sure to share this lecture to Class 1B. Oh, and remember to read the handouts in the Ko-Fi link I placed in the description. Class 1A, I had a blast being your substitute teacher. My wife's already at the door to pick me up, so this has been My Wife Is DMC. I'm DMV, and my wife and I hope you have a great day ahead.